The Regulation G ladder has been live on Showdown for a couple of days now, and with that we've had a handful of tournaments hosted on Limitless TCG. And from that, I've gathered up some of the best performing teams from across those events. That includes the 80 plus player Himmy Burns tour that wrapped up a couple of hours ago, and I've gone ahead and put together some spreads that I think fit these teams. So the first team we're going to be taking a look at here guys is Killua's Lunala team. Now this is the team that did win the Himmy Burns tour. Um, as you can see here, this is a hard trick room team with Lunala. We have Lunala, regular Ursa Luna, Indeedy Female, Arm Rouge, Dark Urshifu, and Clefairy. Now, this team and these spreads, I've gone pretty basic with, right? For the most part, we kind of know what is pretty optimal on at least four of these Pokemon when it comes to a team like this. But the Lunala really was one of the biggest issues, right? Now, I personally have not tested much Lunala myself, but I do think this is a very strong Pokemon in the current metagame. With access to things like Meteor Beam plus Power Herb, obviously raising up what is a very good special attack stat. Base 137, so when we're quiet 180, we hit very damn hard. And of course, Meteor Beam, when we click it, does raise up our special attack state stat by one stage. Which again, you know, having almost 300 special attack on this Pokemon is pretty damn good. Um, If you really wanted, you could even opt to run something like this. Uh, I honestly think something like that is fine as well. But for me, I do just like hitting those bump numbers. And then uh, I also do like just splitting my defenses. I, you know, for, for me, it's just like a, it's a little optimal play. Yeah, like I like to do it. I like having my defenses be at least half of my HP stat if I possibly can. Just for, you know, a little just efficiency things, right? Uh, then the regular Ursa Luna, again, this is kind of however you want to run it. Um, as you can see here, this is a Terra Water set that I did think was very, very interesting to not see something like, you know, Ghost. Um... Or even, you know, something along the lines of even just Terra Normal, um, especially with Calyrax running around everywhere. But of course, um, looking at my EVs here, I've gone just, again, very, very simple. Very similar to what we said about the Lunala before. If you want this here, completely fine. But again, me being me, I like to just kind of have them, you know, be half of each other. Uh, and because of that, you know, I like to run it up just a little bit here. You know, obviously 13 and uh, 25, it's not exactly half there, but it's close enough. Um, but yeah, a regular Ursa Luna is still an incredibly good Pokemon in this metagame. 140 base uh, physical attack with, you know, obviously Guts plus Flame Orb is just incredible. Uh, and 50 speed um, is just really, really good, right? The, the slowest Pokemon uh, really in the metagame that I think is good is going to be Calyrax Ice. Uh, and this is a Pokemon that speed ties it. So 50% of the time, you win it 100% of the time. Uh, and I also just realized that is why they're Terra Water, so they don't lose the, um, you know, even if they do lose the speed tie, uh, you resist the Glacial Lance, obviously. Um, and with this, you know, physical defense that you can eat those pretty comfortably. Um, but yeah, very, very good Pokemon. Um, then in DD here and Arm Rouge, very, very simple. I almost always run this in DD set here. Um, if you wanted, you don't, like, you can just, again, drop something like this and just, like, go like this. That's completely fun as well. I like knowing when my Ndidi is going to be faster than the other. Um, on a team like this, honestly, it probably doesn't matter as much. You could even just go for something like a, a minus um, speed nature as well if you really wanted. Uh, but again, this is just the standard spread I run. I run it on basically all my Ndidis. Um, and I don't like changing it around, especially, you know, because I, I do run a bit of Ndidi, especially right now with Calyrax, because I think it's pretty good. Uh, but again, the set is pretty simple. Um, I am kind of surprised to see Heal Pulse over Helping Hand here. Um, but in saying that, Heal Pulse, obviously, when paired up with Lunala, is very good. Um, I didn't even touch on it while we were looking at it, but, like, Shadow Shield here is, like, obviously really good, right? If you're full HP, you take half damage. Um, so getting the Shadow Shield, I guess, back to full is probably what you want. Uh, and in saying that, yeah, you want Lunala to probably be... Honestly, in saying that, you probably want this... Yeah, I just realized you probably actually just want this thing to be slower than Lunala, don't you? Yeah, that is actually probably the play, right? Because if I go like this, and I do this... Yeah, if I go 81 here, and then I'm not... Yeah, yeah, that's probably the play, because if you're slower, then you could potentially get the Shadow Shield back up. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, The Psychic Seed as well is also really good, especially for things like Knock Off. Um, because, like, Incineroar is, like, best way of hurting you is Knock Off. So if you don't actually have an item because you've consumed it, it is really, really nice. Uh, not to mention, as well, another thing here. Being very slow means that you'll always get your terrain up. If, like, say, for example, you and a, you know, a Rillaboom or you and a, um, you know, uh, a Maridon, which, again, that's never going to happen. But the slower terrain will always be the one that stays up. So having that, obviously, is always very nice as well. Just a little bit of consistency. Armor Rouge, very, very simple. This is just max, max, zero speed. Um, not much to say. It's it's the same set we've seen run for a very long time. Uh, and I think the reason Armor Rouge will see a bit of play over Hat is this move right here. Wide Guard's just really good. You know, you see double Wide Guard on this team. Um, can't really, you know, can't really say enough about it, right? Like, you got these two Wide Guard Mons paired up with just four incredibly strong attackers and two really good supports. It's honestly just really, really nice. Uh, Dark Oshi doing Dark Oshi things. Essentially, Dark Oshi is really good on these teams for leading um, to basically break things that would beat your Trick Room on lead, right? For example, uh, if you're going up against an DD that has, like, Imprison, right? What would you do? You just go, like, you know, your own DD plus, like, um, Urshifu, and then you just go, like, follow me, or or even just honestly just go Trick Room, Terra, Dark, Wicked Blow, uh, whatever you want, because Urshi can live an attack coming out of things like, um, coming out of the Calyrax Shadow as well, which is nice, and then, yeah, you kind of just pump some damage into it, and, you know, you just, yeah, pick up your KOs. 
Uh, and then finally, Clef. Um, Clef, I think, is pretty similar to what we were saying about Ndidi before. Um, I think Clef is really good in games where you don't actually have to lead with um, the side spam. So, for example, you think side spam's bad, and you know maybe you still bring your arm rouge, but you don't bring the the Ndidi. You can just lead something like Lunala plus Clef. Uh, Lunala can obviously get up Trick Room for itself. Clef can you just give it Frame Guard, making it insanely bulky. You, know, you just go for the follow me trick room and then you just heal pulse it back up and you just keep the shadow shield healthy which is very nice uh but yeah look very very cool team here by Kilowa. i can see why this team won it's very you know it, it's got a lot of small things going for it uh but really too you've just got these pokemon here that you know it's not these guys aren't restricted pokemon but my god they hit like restricted pokemon so the next team we're going to be taking a look at here is chance hides to wrap a ghost balance team now if i click on this and you see here this has got you know a pretty standard balance core up we've got the rillaboom Incin, and uh and water ogre pawn just, you know, it's the stock standard fire, water, grass balance. It's been incredibly good for, you know, basically all of regulation F. It's very, very nice. Uh, Tarapa goes, obviously, our new, you know, legendary Pokemon that is very, very good right now. But then we have Comfy and Sableye, which are two very, very interesting picks, right? So, start things off here, Rillaboom. This is just a very stock standard set. This is the set I ran at the Brisbane Regional back in Reg G, or sorry, Reg E. Um, I'm personally just a big fan of this. I like having 116 adamant minimum. Um, I think Rillaboom doing damage is very, very nice. Um, and then, yeah, I just like having a little bit of speed to, you know, potentially win speed ties uh, and also not, you know, get outsped by fast Incineroars, which we have actually seen in the past kind of speed creep those uh, very minimal speed Rillabooms. Um, and then, of course, looking at the moves here, I think high horsepower is incredibly good. I know a lot of people will look at things like Rillaboom Incin and just want to go like parting shot plus U-turn, but I do think having high horsepower currently is really, really good, right? You, you need ways to hit Mariadon because like this is a Pokemon with Assault Vest that is happy to switch into its electric moves. But then, like, once you switch in, what are you going to do? You can't hit it with these two moves, right? So having something like high horsepower just to get some good chip into it is very, very nice. Then we have Comfy. Now, this is a Pokemon that is seeing a ridiculous amount of play, surprisingly. I cannot believe how much I've seen this on the ladder. Um, I probably should have mentioned, too, this team actually got second at this event. Um, It, it lost to the Lunala team in, um, you know, in the finals, which honestly makes a bit of sense. This team kind of relies on, you know, setting up this guy uh, with Terra Star Storm, and it had, you know, double wide guard, so... I can kind of see how it lost it, right? But Comfy is incredibly interesting. So for anyone who doesn't, I guess, understand how this Pokemon functions, it has this cool ability called Triage, right? Basically meaning uh, all of its healing moves are plus three priority. Uh, and Draining Kiss and Floral Healing are both um, healing moves. So they both get plus three priority, which is like very cool, especially for this guy, like sniping things like the, um, the, the what's his name? It's like the Urshifus and whatnot, I think is like pretty cool. Even just like low HP mods in general. But really the cool, the main thing here is actually just Floral Healing, um, basically healing up allies by 50 percent which is very very good uh, it also has access to trick room as well which is either nice for like one setting up trick room if you need it or two reversing it because this mod is actually relatively bulky its hp stat is very poor but obviously its defenses are very nice which kind of makes up for it um but really the reason this mod i think is good especially with the flower healing is this guy right here essentially you can play this thing as a terrapa ghost and just say hey i'm just going to keep priority healing this thing keep getting its terra shell back up and it's going to sit there and just spam out calm minds right Terra Star Storm is busted. I don't know if you guys have tested this one out, but I think it's incredibly good. Um, I peaked at like 30th on the showdown ladder with it. Um, not this team in particular, but with Terrapa Ghost. Uh, and I think the mod's incredibly good. Earth Power is really good for if you don't want to Terra it and you need to hit Steel and Rock types. Um, and Terra Star Storm is just incredibly good. And when you Terra, this move becomes a spread move with 120 base power, which is kind of nutty. Um, and yeah, Calm Mind is just really good, right? This one is so bulky. Um, I wish I had its Terra stats here, but its HP stat goes up to like base 160 and its special attack, I think, goes up to base 130 off memory. Um, so yeah, you could like imagine like this mod with like, you know, plus one, plus two starts going insane, especially too, when you factor in like floral healing off this guy, you know, you've got intimidate fake out here with parting shots, you know, you've got fake out here plus grassy terrain. Um, it becomes really, really hard with Tropico. So like this team, it really is just protect the, uh, the king, right? You've got this Tropicos, you've got five support pieces around it, but my god, like, you know, I, I say it's got five support pieces as well, like, you've got Woodhammer, you've got Flare Bleach, you've got Ivy Cudgel, you know, Horn Leech as well, like, you've got some damage dealers outside of Tropicos, but my god, when this mod starts popping, it, it's very hard to deal with, like, I think this mod's biggest issue is wide guard mods, but again, that's where you just, like, if you're going up against wide guard, don't Terra early yet, like, get up, like, get up to it, these heal up a bit, and then, like, just start doing Terra Star Storms without the Terra, then remove their wide guard user, and then you kill it, it's, it's like, super good, man. Um, Inzin though, this mod, I mean, it's Inzin. I don't really want to go too much into this. The EVs are pretty simple. I'm going to have them on like basically all of the other uh, sets here, but it's Inzin, dude. Inzin Rillaboom is really good. You're protecting the king, does what it does. Same here with, uh, the, the Ogre Pawn Wellspring here. Again, it's, it's a very bulky Pokemon that also can pump out a bit of damage. A very, very good. Um, I love this Pokemon. I think it is like super consistent on teams like this. Uh, but the last one here is Sableye. Now, Sableye is just a, it's a saucy little motherfucker. I'm not going to lie. 
As you can see here, this is just dual screens with light clay. Very, very good. Obviously, Terra Steel is a fantastic defensive Terra, especially when, you know, Fluttermane is uh, just going to one-shot you a lot of the time anyway. Uh, but then we also have Faint plus Will-O-Wisp, which is really, really good. Um, Will-O-Wisp obviously is just fantastic at crippling a lot of these physical attackers. And Faint is really good for the uh, the move we mentioned before, which is Wide Guard. Um, you know, a lot of people want to sit in front of the Tropic Ghost and just click Wide Guard. Uh, you can just break the Wide Guard with Faint. Uh, so yeah, that's really, really cool. I think this is like a super well-constructed Tropagos team. Um, and yeah, honestly, like if you guys want to um, try out Tropagos, this is like a really good team. I couldn't recommend it enough. Like it, it is just centered around making sure this mod pops off. And I think that's really cool. So next team up here is Damien Lillard VGC, aka Dame Dollar. Um, this is his Calyrax Shadow team. Now, this is actually a very, very similar team to what I have personally been testing with myself. And because of that, I, you know, I had to showcase the team. I think he's still got like top four with the team. Um, and it's just, it, it's awesome. Calyrax is the most broken Pokemon in the game. Uh, as you can see here, he has opted for the Terra Ghost over options like Terra Normal, uh, which is obviously still really, really nice, especially too when you've got something like Tornadus with speed control. Uh, now, I will touch on the Tornadus first as I do like to go in order. I am really torn on this set because part of me thinks the Tornadus might be really fast just to make sure it gets off that tailwind, especially because we see the taunt here. Uh, but personally, I'm just a huge fan of really bulky Tornadus. Um, again, looking at this, uh, I, I've probably I, I've probably made a mistake. This probably is really fast Tornadus um, in saying that because like you've got the taunt to taunt other Tornaduses, I would assume. Um, so yeah, you could probably definitely opt for a faster variant of it. Uh, but yeah, like Tornadus, it's really consistent. You look at this team here, it loves Tailwind. Um, and obviously, yeah, it's just like a really good Pokemon. Uh, Calyrax, again, guys, this mod is insane. It, the second you start snowballing kills with it, it, it honestly feels like it's game over. It, it really is pretty busted, man. Um, spread on this though, again, you can, you can change this up. I've seen other people run pretty bulky Callies, but because we're still really early in the format, I don't like not having just like max max simply because I never want to be in a position where I lose to a Calyrax because it just beats my Calyrax and the game's over, uh, which is also why I'm kind of not a massive fan of Terry Ghost. But again, I'm sure if you play around it, you understand what you got here, you know, maybe lead it with Yumi and Xiao, make sure they can't actually target you, um, you know, with the, uh, with the, the Astral Barrage of their own. It can be very, very good. Uh, but in saying that, I do think this is why Shadow Ball is like super mandatory on choice specs. I think you have to have at least Shadow Ball third item. Uh, sorry, third move. Simply because you don't want to be in a situation where you're just locked out of Astral Barrage. It does feel really, really bad. Uh, but obviously, Draining Kiss, E4 are both really cool techs as well. Um, Draining Kiss is just good for healing up in like late game scenarios or even chipping down certain Pokemon. Uh, and of course, you know, expanding Force Plus in DD is pretty damn broken. Now... Chiyu on this team is incredibly good, I think. I'm a huge fan of Chiyu with Calyrax. I think it's very similar to Incineroar in the sense that it's like the perfect like the typing really to pair up with Kali. Um, you want a dark type to help you beat, you know, opposing ghost types. Uh, and Chiyu, obviously, um, honestly, sorry, in my opinion, is a lot better in this metagame than it probably is in Regulation F. And the reason for it is I think Calyrax Shadow is the best Pokemon in the game. Um, and Chiyu with actually only 64 HP can always tank two Astral Barrages off this Pokemon, which I think is really important. Like you can play this thing super offensive, just go 68 HP for special defense, and you can just like guarantee eat two choice specs Astral Barrages, as long as they're not buffed up, uh, which I think is really important because it allows you to switch in on an Astral Barrage, um, assuming obviously you're not eating two attacks, uh, and then just like, you know, tank another one if necessary and fire back with like a Dark Balls or a Snarl or whatever, and just pick up a KO. Uh, but I'm a huge fan of the fish. You guys already know that. Um, set's pretty simple. This is just a modest max speed set. Uh, pairs up really well with Tornadoes. We've got a bit of bulk to make sure we can live, you know, an attack or two, which I do think on a Pokemon like Chiyu is very, very important. Uh, the Ogreborn Wellspring here, basically exactly what we looked at before. Uh, difference with the IVs, though, is, sorry, the EVs, is this is just built to outspeed um, Landorus Incarnate. Um, this team doesn't really have the best Lando answer outside of your own Calyrax. Um, and, you know, if your Calyrax isn't on the board, Landorus feels like it is just going to run straight through this team. And um, because of that, I made sure Ogreborn Wellspring was just a little bit faster than it. So we got, we've at least got a second one that can kind of deal with the Lando I. Um, again, Indeedee, we spoke about it before. Uh, this one's got the helping hand. It's very good, dude. Just pair up Indeedee with uh, with Tornadoes. Sorry, with Calyrax. You're going to have a good time. Uh, and then finally, Mian Xiao. Um, Mian Xiao, I think, is probably like the biggest winner of Regulation G. I'm not going to lie. This Pokemon, it's perfect with Cali. I kind of talked about it yesterday. Um, if you guys also didn't see that video, by the way, go check it out. Um, we did a we did a Calyrax uh, video, you know, kind of showcasing it. Talking about all those different sets, its partners, you know, teams it's pretty good on. We did some battles as well, all that kind of stuff, guys. And I guess like, well, while I'm talking about it, if you're interested, guys, you know, for me, just, just click the subscribe button, stick around. We've got a lot of good content. Yeah, hit the like button too and the uh, leave a comment while you're there. Yeah, yeah. You guys know the drill. If, if you hear three teams in, we're like, what, 15 minutes into the video. 
Like I'm, I'm, I'm sure you, you, you can hit the subscribe button for your boy. Uh, but yeah, Mian Xiao, um, this one, incredibly good, right? It's got the fake out for you. You've got the inner focus, which means you can't get faked out by the, uh, the Incineroars. You're also a fighting type with stab close combat, uh, which again is very, very good into Incineroar. You got faint to break wide guard and you've got wide guard yourself to make sure you, you know, to kind of help protect your cataract. I think this one's super sick. Um, the only thing is, I don't know why everyone is starting to run Terra Fighting. I am certain there is probably some offensive calc that you run Terra Fighting for. I just don't know what it is. I don't think I've ever terrored my Mian Xiao anyway, so maybe like it really doesn't matter. But I'm sure there is probably some K you don't pick up without Terra Fighting, and that's why they're going for Terra Fighting. Sadly, I just don't know what that calc is. So the next one here is Ryan, aka Sableye VGC Sun Team. Now, I will throw it out there. Um, I did actually, you know, have a little chat with Ryan earlier today. I believe he's going to be doing a video on this one probably tomorrow. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but this is just a Groudon Sun Team. I think he got top eight at this event as well, um, at the, the Himi Tour, that is. Um, and I'm a huge fan of Sun right now. I think this team's incredibly cool, right? You got the Groudon here. Sets are very, like, is very, very simple. Um, I think Clear Amulet as well on this Pokemon is, like, super, super good. It just means, like, Incineroars can't just, like, switch in, intimidate you, fake out, switch out type bullshit, right? Like, if they're gonna, you know, fake you out, they gotta stay in, or, you know, they have to switch out Raw the next turn without getting the Intimidate down, which I do think is very important. I mean, the other thing too is they actually have to knock you off, which is why I do like a little bit of speed just to make sure that, uh, you know, if they do try to creep those ruler booms that we're talking about before, you know, if they do your say like 111, 112, you know, you've got the option there just to fire off that precipice blade uh, and pick up a big KO. Uh, and the other thing I really like too is the stomping tantrum because it says to the incineral, like, hey, I dare you to fake me out. Like, I dare you to fake me out. Like, if you fake me out, I'm firing off a base 150 stomping tantrum next turn and I'm still max, um, max attack because you didn't get the clear amulet, which I think is like super sick. Uh, Incineroar though on these teams I think is like almost mandatory um again I feel like Chiyu just fits this slot as well it really depends what you want right as you can see here we got the Incinerilla uh Rilla and Bolt um which obviously you know gives you kind of a, a balanced core as well on this team which I do think is very nice um because of that I do think Incineroar you know fits the team maybe just a little bit better uh but again this is a fire type in sun you don't need much attack you know to really you know fire off some massive flare blitzes um so yeah like really really cool there uh, we've got the Urshi Dark, man. Urshi Dark plus, you know, Speed Booster Flutter, man, which this isn't, but this is, you know, it's essentially Speed Booster thanks to Sun. Uh, but yeah, Urshi Dark plus Flutter, man. It's just a fantastic combo, man. These two work super duper well together. Really can't say enough about it. Their offensive coverage is insane. Uh, the offensive pressure they put on the board as well together is kind of nutty. Uh, then we have the AV Bolt. Now, obviously, this isn't the Calm Mind Raging Bolt that we have seen in the past, but obviously, again, on a Sun team like this, um, you just deal so much damage anyway that you kind of want, like, the Assault Vest so you can just start clicking buttons. Like, it, it kind of feels bad if you're playing with Groudon, but, like, your game plan is to set up Raging Bolt, kind of, because it's like, oh, yeah, like, I use Groudon for Sun, and then I went to these two and just started pivoting, right? And then it's, like, Raging Bolt, just, like, Calm Mind. It's, like, it kind of feels like the team's built around Raging Bolt and not Groudon, which I don't think is ideal, and because of that, I do really, really like the Assault Vest here. Uh, and not to mention, dude, look at this attack stat, and then, you, you like, you get the you get the Drought into the Protosynthesis. This one starts absolutely slapping, dude. It's very hard to remove straight away, and just yeah, like super cool one. Um, then obviously we have the Rillaboom here. Um, this is a U-turn set, which honestly, you know, I said before, run high horsepower so you can hit things like uh, Maridon. This team doesn't need it yet. Yeah? We got the Groudon with the ground moves. We got the Flutterman with the Fairy moves. Just let this guy pivot around with Incineroar, boys. That's all it is. Um, I went a lot more offensive on this one as well, just because this one is probably the best answer to Kyogre teams. Um, obviously, you know, Raging Bolt also does things there as well. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you just got to go into your Rillaboom and just, you know, smack them with a big wood hammer and kind of end their lives. Uh, so yeah, because of that, you know, we just got very offensive on this one. But again, it's, it's just an option. You could run it, you know, less offensive if you wanted. Uh, but finally, Choice Specs, Flutterman. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. We're in the early format, so these spreads might not be optimal, but my God, I would do not want to lose a game because I'm like, you know, 190 something speed and the opposing Flutter main smack speed and I set the sun for them. It sounds like the worst thing ever. So because of that here, you know, we're just max speed. Um, one cool thing I'll throw out there as well, guys, if you terror this Pokemon, it will never die to a Calyrax who is neutral attack uh, it with the choice specs. Um, you know, if as long as you Terra, you'll eat that Astral Barrage okay. You'll fire off either a Moonblast or a Shadow Ball, and it's going to feel really good. Uh, but yeah, really sick team by Ryan. Um, I'll leave a link to his channel down below, actually, um, because I am pretty sure he said he's going to be doing a video on this team tomorrow. Uh, so go check him out, guys. It means a lot. Ryan's a really cool guy, and I like a lot of his content. Uh, so yeah, make sure you check him out. Uh, and hopefully he has a, you know, a bit better breakdown on this team than I do, and you can get the, uh, the real EVs rather than the ones I've smacked together. So the next one here is Robin Solo Runs a Turn of this team. Now, this team is like really interesting. Um, it has like two different modes to it. Like, first of all, you've got the Eternatus mode. Uh, for anyone who doesn't really understand what Eternatus kind of does, um, it pressure stalls you with cosmic power. 
So like its whole game plan is to sit there with cosmic power recover and just like pressure stall you out. I'm um, using things like Incineroar and uh, Rillaboom to pivot around, uh, which could be like very, very annoying. I almost lost the game because this thing just sat there at speeding my Tarapagos just like with like terrain plus recover, like healing back 56% as I was hitting it for like 62 with earth powers. It was really, really frustrating. Um, and I literally almost lost. I think I ended up like squeaking it out on the last earth power because like I managed to just like call um, a protect in the game, which this one doesn't have. Um, but yeah, EVs, honestly, I'm not too sure how you want to EV this thing. This is really naturally fast, so I wanted to make sure I outsped opposing Ogre Pawns, just in case. Uh, because this one still does hit really hard. Even with no investment, sludge, like, stab sludge bombs off, this thing does a lot of damage. Uh, not to mention flamethrowers, obviously, just, like, it's a good coverage move for a guy like this. It helps you hit the steel types that you can't hit otherwise. But yeah, it kind of just, it, it's really annoying. It pairs with the real insane. Uh, we're going too much into these. We've kind of spoken about them a lot. But these guys, it's the defensive backbone of a lot of these teams. Uh, yeah, so these two pair up with Eternators uh, e -tornadus is like just super frustrating to deal with. Uh, then we have the other mode here, which is the Urshi Rapid Rain mode, right? So we've got Tornadus here with a Rain Dance and then obviously Lando, I, and Urshi. Um, super interesting to see the Urshi Sash here. Uh, I know the homie Jonzu has been telling me for a while now that he thinks Urshi, ra uh, yeah, Urshi Rapid with the Sash is the source. Um, so I could definitely see it here, right? You get up the rain, you make sure you're always going to live one attack. Uh, especially too, if you're on a lead where like potentially their Flutter Man could threaten a one shot on you. Uh, but their ally, you know, is like slower. So then you can go like Rain Dance plus Surging and then go like Tailwind Surging the next turn, something like that, right? There, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. Um, just gives that mod a little bit of extra utility. Um, but then, yeah, we just got like, look, Landorus, Eye Tornadoes. They are very, very standard stuff here. Um, We actually see another Taunt Tornadoes as well, which makes me think like, yeah, like maybe I've, I have I don't know. I, I've made these sets incredibly bulky because that's just what I, I'm used to running in this format. Um, But maybe these guys are running a lot faster. Like obviously Cover Cloak plus Taunt is a thing. Um, so yeah, potentially, uh, again, you could potentially run this thing a lot faster. I'm not too sure. Like I know I back in what well, start of reg F, I was running like 158, um, just to outspeed, um, the, the, the ogre pawn creep wars where they were going like 153, 154. There were even people going like 155, 156 because that's like went 158. Um, so yeah, you can run it a little bit faster if you want. Uh, but yeah, this is a really cool team. It's got a rain mode and a stall mode, which is very interesting. Um, but yeah, definitely together. It's very strong. Uh, and let's be honest, Eternatus uh, is definitely one of the better walls into Urshifu as well, which is really cool. You can kind of, you know, stall out the Surging Strikes. As you see here, it only has eight Surging Strikes. So uh, with an Eternatus on the board, it only has four, um, which I do think is like really cool. Um, and it also just like hard walls it. It's HP and defensive, so that's pretty good. Uh, and obviously it's a Dragon type. So the next one here, we have Tekka's uh, Zacian team, or as I like to call it, the Howling Dogs. You know, you have a look at this team, right? Zacian, he's a dog. Insane, he's a dog. Urshi, he may as well be a dog. Champau may as well be a dog too. Rillaboom, eh, I won't call you a dog, man, but you're close enough, yeah. And then just scream tail here, right? So, Zashian is the big bad of the, uh, you know, the previous generation. Obviously, this Pokemon does seem like it may have fallen off just a wee little bit. Um, but regardless, I do think this Pokemon is still incredibly good. Um, in particular, on this spread here, you'll have a look at, um, I've got this speed hitting um, 207. This essentially just outspeeds everything, not named Calyrax Shadow Rider. Um, obviously, you could go max speed, but like, I don't think this Pokemon is like popular enough, nor do I really think you... Like, yeah, I, I just, I don't think you need to outspeed the mirror. And because of that, I think you just want to outspeed those base 135s, you know, and uh, Iron Bundle as well. And so because of that, we just got 207. Pumped into HP, because obviously I think on a Pokemon like this, having a lot of HP is very good. Um, And again, you could opt to run more attack, but this Pokemon hits so hard naturally, I don't think it needs to. Uh, Not to mention as well, you're getting damage coming from the Screamtail and from the Chian Pao. Because of that, I do think that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, Zashian, it's a cool mod, man. Um, I honestly, you, I could even see people dropping Sacred Sword for Swords Dance, but I do like having the coverage to hit Steel types, which is pretty nice. Uh, but yeah, I think this Pokemon's still really good. And on a team like this, I do think it um, it, it is really able to function, right? Um, we got the Insane Rilla again. I'm not going to talk about it too much. This Rilla, uh, sorry, this Insane here does have the Taunt. Uh, and this Rilla Boom here has the Knock Off, which I did think was like really, really interesting. I've also forgot to put a Nature on that guy. He's just adamant. Um, and then, of course, we have the Urshifu Rapid Strike as well. Another just very standard Fire Water Grass Core. Very, very strong. Um, and one thing I'll mention with the Urshifu Rapids as well with the Choice Scarf sets, guys, is go max speed, Adamant. Um, this is actually one point faster than the Calyrax Shadow Riders. Calyrax Shadow hits 222. Um, and Urshifu Rapid Adamant max speed actually hits 223, which is a very, very pog champ for Urshifu. Uh, so, yeah, I do think that is very, very nice. Uh, and then Urshifu's best friend, or at least one of them here, is the old Chien Pao with the Focus Sash. These two together are really good. Terra Water, you know, Surging Strikes next to a Chien Power just does a ridiculous amount of damage. Not to mention, I think Chien Power right now is actually in a pretty good spot. Uh, one, its ability is really good with some of the Restricteds. But two, Ice Types offensively are just incredibly good. Uh, but one thing, guys, I will throw this out there. I have been saying it to the homies for a couple days now, and I'm so glad to see it. I don't think this Pokemon wants Ice Coverage anymore. I think you need a Dark-type move. 
that isn't Sucker Punch because you need to have a way to hit freaking Calyrax Shadow Rider. And I think Lash Out is the perfect move, right? It's very, very good if you get intimidated. Uh, not to mention, it's just, it's strong, right? Like, yeah, you could run Crunch there. You could run Throat Chop. But getting like 2x power if your stats gets lowered, I think is very, very nice for something like Chen Pao. Um, but yeah, this is just Terra Stellar set, you know, it does a lot of work. I think Ghost is probably still a little bit better, uh, but I also just don't like getting faked out. Um, and then to round this team out here, we have the Scream Tail. Uh, this guy here, the speed stat is, I believe, just to be, that should be one point faster. Whoopsie doo. Because uh, I'm pretty sure gouging only hits 157, right? Um, it's meant to be one point faster than gouging fire. That's the whole game plan, uh, game plan here. Um, and then you just click how you disable your own core. It's just really annoying. Um, he doesn't have any offensive moves here. Um, which probably means like this doesn't need to happen. <laughs> just put it like there or something. Um, I think you run play rough on this mon, honestly. Um, if you're running Hal, because it's one of those things where like if you have like 31 here, like if, you, if you've got like one extra point there, like if you hell up your allies twice, all of a sudden this thing like has 170 attack, which is like almost as much as Azashi in here, which is kind of nutty. Um, so yeah, I think you run play rough, but obviously you know he he did better than I would with this team, so that's the set. Uh, th this is his set, you know my spreads. Uh, but yeah, really cool team. I think Hal is like a really cool concept, especially on a team like this with just like, you know, all physical attackers. Now, so here we have a Mariadon team. Now, this one was pretty interesting for two reasons. One, obviously, it's a Mariadon team with Iron Hands, which I do think is very, very good. But two, it is actually a, uh, it's a hybrid tail room team. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm not too sure how this team is EV'd. There are a couple different options you can go with here. Like one, you can go with a slightly faster Iron Hands and Blood Moon because obviously when paired up with Tornadus, um, it is pretty nice. But I do think that on this team, it is just a hard Trick Room mode. I think Iron Hands, Blood Moon, and Giraffe are meant to be hard Trick Room. And I think Iron Bundle, um, Mariadon, and Tornadus are meant to be hard Hyper Offense, right? I see a world where if you're playing like, I, it's, say for example, you're bringing like Iron Bundle and Blood Moon, you're always bringing like Giraffe Mariadon. And if you're going for something like, you know, Mariadon, Bundle, and Tornadus, you're probably always just bringing like Giraffe, maybe one of these two, right? Uh, but regardless, really cool team here. Um, in terms of the EVs here for the Brian Hands, um, again, I've gone zero speed here on the Brave Nature, maxed out our special defense. I just made the HP so it's exactly double our, our special defense stat here, maxed out our attack stat. Um, obviously, if you want to get the attack stat here with the Mariadon too, which is very, very nice. Because uh, again, you look at this mod, it hits incredibly hard. It's got the clear amulet. It just puts it into a really, really good position, right? Uh, then we have the Tornadus, same set we've been looking at all day. I'm going to say the same thing. Probably run this fast because they have Taunt. I can't believe every Tornadus here has Taunt, but honestly, I don't think I should be surprised. There's a lot of Pokemon that I want to set up right now. Are uh, very good into things like Tropagos as well. Um, so yeah, definitely keep that in mind. Uh, honestly, if it is for things like Tropagos, I guess you don't need the speed, but definitely something you have to keep an eye on. Ursaluna, very, very standard, similar to what we said about the uh, Ursaluna earlier here. Max that attack, stat out. We've got the HP exactly, you know, double the special defense stat. Nothing fancy here. It's the same set that's been really good for, all, you know, all of regulations, really E and F. Uh, I am Bundle here. This is the Focus Sash set with the Hydro Pump. It's it's Focus Sash 3 attack. I do think having Encore on this set is very, very good. But because we are Focus Sash 3 attack here, we did just go max, max. Because obviously we get the Quirk Boost or the other Quirk Drive coming off our Mariah on here. Uh, the Giraffe, again, this one is super, super interesting. As you can see here, technically this Giraffe has no attacking moves. It is Nightshade, Helping Hand, Trick Room, and Protect. Now, I don't know if that Nightshade is supposed to be Shadow Ball, and because of that, I've just maxed out the bulk. There is zero reason to have any offensive investment on this team. If you wanted, you could also run a minor speed nature on this guy. Uh, but for the most part, you're kind of just clicking Helping Hands anyway. Um, so yeah, that like at least if the Trick Room's up. Uh, but yeah, I think this might is maybe meant to be Shadow Ball. I'm not entirely too sure. I feel like you want Shadow Ball because this mon is like literally the best mon at walling out um, Calyrex Shadow right now. Um, obviously, you're immune to the Ghost type and you resist the, the Psychic type and having Shadow Ball can just like threaten a one shot. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but also speaking of like the Calyrex Shadow as well, it was actually meant to be my plan for tonight before I saw like this big tour. Um, I'll probably do a video tomorrow um, just going over like answers to Calyrex Shadow. Some of the best Pokemon into Calyrex Shadow because I do think it's the best Pokemon in the game right now. Uh, and I do think finding ways to beat it is obviously very, very nice. Um, but anyway, to round out this team here, we have Mariadon. Um, this is just a choice spec set. Again, very similar to what I said about a lot of those other base 135s. You could run this slower, right? You could run this slow, bulky Mariadon. I know people will do it. You know, they'll go like 36 modest, max HP, put a little bit of speed in there, especially because you got the Tornadus, right? You don't need max speed, especially when you got Torn Bundle. I'm not risking it. I never want to be in a situation where like I lead my Torn Mariadon and they just lead like Torn Fluttermane. 
and they just like outspeed me one shot me with a specs moon blast or something like that because of that i'm just max max i'm saying like hey you know i'm a terror electric you're gonna terror fairy we're gonna roll the dice yeah again as the format develops things will definitely change but because we're still only in the first couple of days i'm just going max max and we'll we'll, we'll switch up the set in a couple of weeks i reckon so our next team here is Davy Bay's Cryodon team. This is another, you know, another Sun team here. And this is a Sun team that is up your boy's alley. I'm not going to lie. No cap on a stack. This is a Sun plus three fire type. It's got the Flood of Fish. You know, it's got the Ogre from Fire. This is my kind of thing, yeah? So looking at the Cryodon to start with here, we got Clear Amulet plus SD. Again, this is a Pokemon where you're probably going to want to run this thing bulky. You know, maybe you're like bulky adamant, right? I'm pretty sure this is a boost to speed Flood of Main. It is, you know, bulky adamant is probably good, right? But as we just said with Mariodon, with three days into the format, I'm not getting caught being outsped. I'm sorry. You don't have to click close combat. This mon hits like an absolute truck because of that. We're just going max, max here. Maybe you get this mon in in a situation where it gets to click the swords dances like the, you know, the flood of being cleans up or, you know, maybe it's a really good board state. Riller or, you know, Insane can just click, you know, the fake outs or whatever. But yeah, I'm not risking it. I'm not risking it. You know, in the future, we'll definitely change things up a bit. But yeah, right now, Cryodon, I'm going max speed, baby, all the way. Uh, Flutter main, very similar set to what we said earlier. This is just the Icy Moonblast Shadow Ball Protect set. Now, I will tell you guys this. Um, I've obviously been a big advocate for Dazzling Gleam over Shadow Ball for a very long time. Uh, the last three formats, actually, I dropped Dazzling Gleam back in regular... Sorry, I dropped Shadow Ball back in Reg D. Uh, this is the first time you want Shadow Ball. Why? Calyrax Shadow is in the game. Not to mention Wide Guard is everywhere. So because of that, Dazzling Gleam does feel a little bit worse. Uh, but yeah, this set here, it's just really good. Moonblast Shadow Ball are both really good stab moves, especially when you pair it up with something like Chiyu. Uh, and not to mention, Icing Wind on a team like this is very good. Like, Mariodon, uh, Chiyu, and Ogreborn Hearthflame all love having, you know, a max speed Flutterman with Icy Wind. Um, again, these two here, I felt like we've spoken about them all day. Yeah, we've got the Rilla, we've got the Incin. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I would like to see this Rilla Boom have the, the high horsepower over the U-turn, simply because this team does not have great ways to hit Mariodon. Really, you're kind of hoping that your Cryodon wins the speed side, Maybe you get a little bit of chip off and Fluttermane can kind of force the terror. Like if Fluttermane forces the terror, then you're in a lot better spot. Uh, but yeah, it's like Ogre Pond can't touch it if it doesn't terror. Chiyu has to Dark Pulse, which honestly, Dark Pulsing feels bad when you have Sun. Like if I'm going to set up the Sun, you best believe I'm just going to go nuking things with like, you know, the overheats and whatnot. Um, but yeah, also the Flood, uh, the flood of Fish, or the, the Fish set here, I should say. Um, this is my very standard fish next to Fluttermane. This is essentially like the, hey, I don't have Tailwind here, but I do have Fluttermane Icy Wind because that you want to hit that 128 speed. That way you outspeed most things um, while still having a lot of, you know, investment here into your defense. We're still getting a modest nature. Uh, honestly, with Modest 36, you still hit so incredibly hard that having that, you know, a lot of bulk into the HP and Fizz defense, I think does go a long way. Uh, and honestly, I find myself in a lot of situations where, you know, max speed fish versus like 128, like, it's very rare where I'm sitting there thinking like, damn, I really wish my fish was like 150 plus. Sometimes there is, uh, but yeah, on a team like this, I don't think it's super necessary. Uh, and then to round things out here, we have the old SD Ogre Pawn, man. Ogre Pawn, her flame in the sun is broken, man. I don't know if you guys have like seen some of the clips. Like I've seen, like, I, sorry, I shouldn't say I've seen. I've done this to Groudons before. Terrifier Groudons with max HP in the sun take like 60% to a Terrifier Ivy Kudgel. Like, how is that balanced? In what world is that balanced? That is like a base, what is it, like 100, is it 100 HP, 140 defense, resisted, and then you just do 60, that, that, dude, this mod's stupid. I, I love Ogre Pawn Hearthflame, I think this mod's busted. Uh, definitely try out this team though, boys, it's a super fun, uh, super fun version of a Sun team, it's like really, really sick. So up next here, we have the Zach's Zamazenta team. Now this team here is actually like really, really interesting because it is just essentially a take on the Kamoaru teams that were kind of running around for a bit, right? Um, obviously, you've got, you know, Big Zashi in here. Uh, sorry, Zashi in. Big Zamazenta here. You know, he gets the Rusted Soul, which means on switching, you know, he just gets that plus one to his special, to his physical defense stat. But yeah, this dude is literally just Kamoa on crack with these sets, right? Your physical defense stat is absolutely insane. Paired up with a very, very good speed stat. Like, honestly, this one's bulk is actually just, like, nutty. Um, and then it also just has like crunch, right? Like you got the crunch to hit the ghost types. You got the body press to hit everything else. Iron defense body press off this one is insane. It's a stab up, um, body press coming off 140 defense. It's honestly pretty nutty. Uh, but yeah, the team, it's pretty simple. Yeah, we got the P2 here. You're probably wondering, Scott, like, why are we quiet here with four attack 31 IV? It's because if you get the attack boost on download, you have a physical terror poison terror blast, which I think is pretty pog champ. Um, the Gastrodon, I thought was like super duper interesting. Um, I'm guessing this team maybe has like Kyogre issues is like probably my thought looking at it. It's like, yeah, you've got um, Amoongus, but like what else? Like these guys kind of really don't deal with, um, 
and Kyogre all that well. So like Gastro is probably just your Kyogre answer. Um, also, another thing too, P2 is a really good answer as well into um, Kali Shadow. Just going to throw that out there. Um, obviously, Gus here, this is the one that, you know, side Pollen Puff into your Zamazent is very, very nice. Redirection Spore is obviously just really, really good. Super stock standard. Um, Ting Lu here, again, this is the one that is buffing up its physical defense stat here, you know, with Rusty, uh, Rusted Shield plus the Iron Defense. So having something like Ting Lu just to help out with that, uh, that special defense stat there obviously does go a long way. Not to mention, it's just a super annoying Pokemon, right? It's another Pokemon that's very, very good into Kali. As a matter of fact, this team's like really good into Kali. Between Incin, Ting Lu, and P2, like you've got a lot of answers into the Kali Shadow, which is probably the best Pokemon in the format. And then, you know, just Snarl, Stab, Stomping, Tantrum here, um, Santum, and Heavy Slam. One thing I will throw out there is I was not like super sold on running Adamant Nature, um, but I do know Heavy Slam Calcs do come into play. And because of that, I was like, this one already, it, it's super bulky as it is. Let's just go like, you know, you know, a lot of Spadef Pump here, obviously max out the HP stat, and then just invest a little bit here into our attack stat. Because, you know, there are situations where Stomping and, sand, uh, and Heavy Slam do need to deal a bit of damage. Uh, Zamazenta, um, I kind of already touched on the spreads, man. I hit 157 just because I want to outspeed. Um, essentially, like anything trying to hit that 156 speeds here. Um, really, there isn't anything like that crazy. Like that's like maybe what Hisuian Arcanine going like Jolly Max speed. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was just a nice speed tier to hit without much investment. And then yeah, really, we're just kind of pumping into our special defense stat, making sure we get the bump on our um, physical defense and maxing out HP. Uh, and then just four into physical attack, just you know, just in case we ever do click crunch. Uh, and then finally, Incin. You guys know what this guy does. I'm not going to go into it. The set's pretty stock standard. You know, evening out the defenses, maxing out the HP, a little bit of speed, you know, just for the mirrors. Uh, a little bit of attack too, because sometimes you do want those blitzes and those knockoffs just to do a little bit. And guys, finally, to round it out here, we have my Calyrex Ice Rider team. Now, I'm going to uh, shout out to the homie G-Man here. He did actually give me a lot of advice on Cali Ice and how to play it. Um, I kind of just slapped the team together. Um, so here, obviously, we've got the Cali Ice, man. This mon's defense is nutty, right? You just max out the HP, max out the attack. 150 defense, 130 special defense is nutty. Um, in Trick Room, it's very, very slow. Very similar to its, uh, its good friend, Kelly Rack Shadow Rider. Um, this mon just has a broken ability. If you start just getting up those chilling nays, it's GG. Obviously, Clear Amulet's really good into Intimidate, um, which obviously, you know, Incineroar does kind of want to get onto you. And Glacial Lance essentially, like, hits everything. Uh, and the stuff, it doesn't hit, like, the Steel and the Fire types. Close Combat is very, very good into it. Um, you could run things like High Horsepower, but honestly, I think Close Combat is just better. In general, on a team like this, we did opt for the uh, the old Assault Vest. I think AV is, like, really nice, especially when your team doesn't have the best answers into things like Kelly's Shadow. Um, so just having a mon that can kind of hard wall it out and potentially just, like, U-turn, knock off. Um, knock off could even be Snarl on a team like this. Uh, really, it's up to you and how you want to run it. Uh, but yeah, I do think Incin on a team like this is very good. Um, I opted for Terra Fairy simply because we've seen a lot of different Terras between like Water and Ghost and all that kind of crap. I just wanted to kind of give you guys an example here. But yeah, I think this mod is like really, really good, especially when paired with um, Giraffe because really this team is a hard Trick Room team, right? Obviously you have, you know, some faster options in things like Alola Ninetales and the Ogreborn Wellspring. But realistically, almost every game, Kali, Ice and Bloodborne, oh, sorry, Bloodborne, Blood Moon kind of want to come. Um, so it's really just about kind of putting them in the position to, you know, sweep through the game. Uh, then we have the Blood Moon Ursulina. We spoke about it earlier, dude. This guy under Trick Room, it's busted, yeah? If you get it next to the Giraffe, you go Terra Normal plus Helping Hand. You start just absolutely sweeping. Um, my Giraffe here, I did opt for a slightly uh, more offensive Giraffe here. As you see, we have the Throat Spray. We've got the Hyper Voice and the Shadow Ball. Um, one of the biggest issues I tend to find that the Giraffe has is you will lead into things like Calyrex Shadow, which you hard wall, but then they lead with their Ndidi, and then they just imprison, and it's a bad time. Uh, because of that, I have the Shadow Ball basically to say like, hey, I can lead with something like my Assault Vest Incineroar, throw a knockoff into the, your Ndidi, and then just like throw a Shadow Ball into your Cali, or even just like lead with something like Ogre Pond Wellspring, um, and then just kind of be like annoying there. Uh, but yeah, I do think that is like really, really good. Um, and then we have the Ogreborn Wellspring here. Uh, again, this is like kind of another tech here that, you know, I kind of didn't mention in the Giraffe one, uh, but it's Taunt. Essentially, the idea here is you would lead something like Ogreborn plus Giraffe, and then you would either go one, just straight up Trick Room, or two, like Raw Shadow Ball the Kali as you taunt the Ndidi as it tries to imprison you. Um, I did drop Spiky Shield on this set, and this was like the advice given to me by the homie G-Man. Essentially, we build this thing incredibly bulky to make sure we can live any like one attack. Um, and at that point, even if we like, you know, as, as long as we live one attack, it's done its job, right? It doesn't matter if we die to a double up. As long as our Trick Room setup doesn't get like, doesn't get stopped, this thing's does it, done its job, yeah? At that point, you just sack it, you get into your Cali, you get into your Blood Moon, you sweep through the game, right? That is this thing's job. It can obviously still pump out a bit of damage. This team can struggle into things like Kyogre, right? Um, so because of that, it is nice, you know, having a, you know, obviously a pivot with Water Absorb. 
you know, heavy damage with wood hammer. Ivy Cudge is obviously nice as well. But yeah, essentially, this thing's job majority of the time is to just die. It is there to make sure Giraffe or Kali get up the trick room and then just let the boy sweep through. Um, and then the last one I threw in here, this was a bit of inspiration coming from the homie uh, Winner Knight. This is just the, the Alolan Ninetales. Um, Alolan Ninetales with this team, I think is pretty nice. Like one, obviously you give the boost to your Calyrax Ice. Um, and when your defense stat uninvested is 170, uh, you could imagine what the snow does for it, giving it a 1.5 times boost. Uh, and then not to mention, Aurora Veil is just incredibly good. Again, Kali and Blood Moon behind Aurora Veil is actually kind of nutty. Um, having Blizzard and Moonblast is very good. Again, Ice, like, uh, stab ice moves right now is very good, and stab the fairy moves right now is very good. So just offensively, it's pretty nice. And then just to round it out with Encore, Encore is just a great, you know, support move, right? You can catch things after a protect. Like, this one adds means a lot of things um, outside of, like, speed control. I um, mean, because I think it's really nice. And obviously, looking at the team, you know, the Veil is just pretty damn good. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Let me know what you guys thought of these teams. Obviously, we're still super early in the format, but I do personally love having a look at a lot of these teams and seeing how they're performing. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite things about VGC. Just those early formats, everything's crazy. You know, we're all trying to learn stuff together. It's just a super fun time, yeah. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this one. I'll, uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.